Steve, in your presentation on public investment strategies for development, you went into great detail on rural public goods. Why are they so important? Rural public goods are important because they enable private uh, enterprises, including small farms, to get on with business. If you don't have the roads, uh, you, can't get a, you can't get to market. If you don't have the education, if you aren't in good health, uh, if you don't have clean water, uh, you just can't get on with, 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 with your business. Now, we know that not only theoretically are those important, but we have plenty of studies, particularly from Asia, of very high returns to public investments in those rural public goods. What do they have to do with the agricultural investment side? Well, they, they make possible additional effort, additional investment by farmers. They make any bank credit more likely to have a decent return. The point about rural public goods is that if the public sector doesn't invest in them, the private sector simply won't provide them or it won't provide them at the level that are necessary for people to get on with their lives and to get on with their businesses, their farming, their livelihoods. Why do you think it is that many governments don't provide funds into these areas? This is a political economy question and my colleague at ODI, uh, David Booth, has a fast answer to that and he says in many political systems Politicians do not favor public goods because they don't discriminate amongst anybody. They're, they're there for the benefit of everybody. And many political systems, politicians want goods which are at their discretion, such as a fertilizer subsidy, which you can direct towards your political supporters and hold back from political opponents. Whereas if you put in a good health system, uh, well-maintained rural roads, they're there for everybody. So the argument is that in some political systems the preference is for goods which can be where you can discriminate amongst who gets access to it. And that is the basis of your political power. So the issue here is to move to political systems where there are groups with political power who see, who, who take the imagination of the greater good of the nation. So it is about educating your populace to make the right democratic decisions to then move the funds into the right direction? There are no fast answers to how you get political systems which recognize the greater good, but we know historically this can happen, and it can happen in poor countries as well as in rich countries. Uh, but we need to learn more about what it is that creates the imagination of some elites, such as in Southeast Asia, who created an awful lot of rural public goods from the 1960s onwards, versus some political elites in some other parts of the world, such as Africa, where there hasn't been that same imagination of the power of rural public goods. Thank you.